Good afternoon, Facebook. I'm sorry, I am a few minutes late. I promised 12 o'clock and it's like 12.04, I'm so sorry. Hi, this is Kristen LeDuc, owner of Porch Nook, a decorative paint business located in Verona, Wisconsin. And that was my laundry. That's my life. <laughs> Welcome to the Porch Nook studio, which is just a fancy word of saying my garage. Okay, real quickie. Um, first of all, I got a whole bunch of new Folsom followers having a blast uh, chatting with these folks and they've been wanting to learn more uh, about Porch Nook and also understanding what really Porch Nook is about really quick. So Porch Nook started as a furniture painting business because of my background in marketing and private label development back in my corporate days. Um, I just decided to launch my own private label of furniture chalky finish paint. So yes, I paint furniture and I sell my pieces locally every once in a while I ship every once in a while. But uh, primarily my business is, um, it's, um, it focuses on my chalky finish paint line. So a lot of folks people are saying or asking here in Folsom, so you sell chalk paint. Oh no, no, I don't sell chalk paint. I sell chalky finish paint. And they're like, well, what's the difference? I'm like, well, you know, there are some differences, but the thing is, is that some brands out there or one particular brand trademark the term chalk paint. No one else can use it. It's kind of like when Okay, you guys in the East Coast and Midwest, you know how we just say uh, snowblower, right? To clear your clear the snow off of your, your patio. Well, other brands can't say snowblower. That is actually owned by, what is it? By a brand, oh, I forget what, I think it's Craftsman. Anyway, everyone else has to call theirs snow throwers. So my paint, Porsche Nook paint, is a chalky finish paint, which means it has a gritty, uh, dry texture to it. It dries quite quickly and allows you to sand and distress your furniture. Does that make sense? I hope that helps my Folsom folks. I do. Message me. Let me know if you have more questions. Okay. So today, today I am, um, oh God, I've got, I got schmutz galore here on my glasses. I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. All right. So today what we're going to be focusing on, we meeting me, cause I just got to get it done and you guys hold me accountable. I do. I socially contract myself through you guys just to keep things rolling, just to keep things going. Okay. So really I'm going to talk about, um, or I'm just going to be sealing <clears throat> these two end tables. They're vintage Drexel, uh, one coffee table, one end table. <clears throat> They're a matching set. And I used Marigold as well as Sublime on these tables. I finished distressing them earlier this week. You guys were with me on live when I did that. Um, I would have gone live yesterday. I am so sorry. I mean, that was my goal. Seriously. I love hanging with you guys. You guys keep me company and I love it. Um, but there's a jackhammer. There was a jackhammer across the street and he wouldn't stop. This wonderful woman across the street, she's getting a complete overhaul when it comes to her landscaping. And this jack, they were just ripping up all of her concrete and I couldn't go live because, okay, so we all agreed that listening to me distress, you know, sandpaper just going is, is hard enough on the ears. Can you imagine going live with a jackhammer going? <laughs> it was awful. I mean, for the love of DIY. So anyway, that's the only thing that will keep me from going live with you guys. So I'm so sorry about the delay. All right. So because of the jackhammer, <laughs> because I wanted to seal with you guys, I just basically redirected my energy elsewhere. And I just decided to whip out a dresser. <laughs> I, I did a dresser really quick. And not only that, oh, I'm so excited about it. So what I did is that I used um, my Porch Nook Chalky Finish Paint after midnight. It's a very inky, very dark, dark black blue. Can you see it? Let me know if you're seeing what I'm seeing. If you can see the color, okay. And I decided that because who knows this about me? Give me a thumbs up if you know this about me. I love anything shiny. And secondly, I love copper. Anytime I see something like a copper color, it makes me stop. And I like freeze and I have to stare at it for, I don't know. So I go somewhere mentally when I look at shiny copper. I love it. So what I did is I decided to make the um, hardware, I'll put you up close here, in a beautiful shiny copper. And you know what? I used a Rust-Oleum to um, update this hardware. I love it. And I love how the Rust-Oleum copper really um, pops with my, with my very inky blue after midnight. Let me know what you think. Here, I'm gonna back up just so you can take a quick look at it. And then we'll start sealing, I, I promise. But again, I just wanted to show you what I was up to because of the darn jackhammer across the street. I thought, well, my kid's at baseball camp. I gotta use my time somehow. What do you think? So yeah, that's what I do with my time. So you're gonna jackhammer? All right, fine, I'm gonna do, do a dresser. So I thought originally I was going to do um, 
sort of like a citrus family of collection of furniture using the Sublime and Monarch. But you know what? I just felt like the uh, After Midnight and sort of like this navy look to this dresser was very, was very fitting. All right. I'm going to put you guys on a clip. I'm going to start going. All right. Just going to put you on a clip. One second. So today, because my plan is that these pieces would probably be more like a higher usage item, meaning high frequency in the home, I'm going to go with a slightly more durable sealant called polycrylic. Let me just see if you can see me. Hold on. So what I do is that I use, oh gosh, I should have tested out these angles. I'm sorry. So today we're going to use, oh, hello. Hi there. So now I can see you guys. Let me move this. Oh, I scrambled to get two loads of laundry done and then I'm like, oh, gotta go live. So I didn't quite get prepared as I usually like to. Put on my ugly apron. <laughs> Got it. Right. Got to protect my clothes. All right. So sometimes, you know, with chalky finish paint, you can seal with the wax. Wax I love because it leaves this really nice buttery sheen to it. You really can't beat it. I love it. But I tend to only use a wax sealant when I know a piece is going to be used primarily for decorative purposes. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a low traffic item. Unlike like cabinetry or let's say a coffee table, which may be in a living room, which is used every single day, I probably won't use a wax because I would want something more durable. Make sense? So today I'm going to use, I'm sorry, it's backwards, Minwax Polycrylic. This one is the clear matte. This brand comes in many different grades of matte all the way to super gloss. I tend to like the matte look. You don't have to use the matte. You can use a satin, which is always really nice. And then you can go glossier, glossier, glossier. So on this slide, I provided a link to this exact polycrylic that I'm using today. Feel free to cl click on it. It'll direct you to Amazon. There you go. Um, here's a little tip for you. Minwax, I love you. I do. <laughs> but they try to, what they do, and you'll notice this on the shelves, they will put this brush right next to the Minwax can because you know, you think, oh, I better get both of them because they'll work best together. That's not the case. The one thing that you have to worry about, and it's not even worry, something you just need to be cognizant of, is bubbles as well as even layering when it comes to polycrylic. Does that make sense? Bubbles in a polycrylic, when it dries, will create these little pin-like dots because of the bubbles. It'll dry with a bubble and it basically creates a, a little black dot. So you want to re, um, avoid bubbles the best that you can. It's going to happen. Hey, Carol. Good afternoon. How are you? So yeah, even though Minwax, you know, it's a Minwax brush next to the Minwax polycrylic, this creates so many bubbles, this brush. I actually use it for painting now. I don't use it for sealing. I personally like to use foam brushes with my polycrylic. It reduces the bubbles significantly. Uh, yeah, don't buy the brush. Don't buy the Minwax brush. Sorry, sorry Minwax, but it's true. You need to talk to your product development folks. Gotta do better, I swear. So I did provide a link to this live on a packet. Actually there are, yeah, it's a packet with multi-sized uh, foam brushes just for you to easily find. Go ahead and click on it. Um, and it's very affordable. I like to have multiple size brushes with me when I apply my polycrylic because they're different parts of the table. You know, it's like I'm gonna use a super fat one when I'm doing the top here. I'll probably move to a medium size one while I'm doing the side as well as the legs. And then when you have really like tight um, corners, creases, small spaces, then you can whip out this little dilly. Oh, you're welcome, Carol. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Okay, so here's another little tip for you for polycrylic. Carol, Carol are you, are, have you sealed with polycrylic? I want to know. I want to know. Are you, and if you, if you do do furniture, do you like, do you like wax or do you like polycrylics or do you use something else? All right, so this is what polycrylic looks like. Oh, I should do this on a table. This is such a bad habit of mine. I just plop it on my piece that I'm working on. I shouldn't do that. Hold on. 
That's a lack of foresight on my part. Sorry. All right. I already opened up my can. You can just use a little can opener like this. <laughs> you open it up and you'll see it's kind of a milky shade. It's a milky shade about it. Once it's dry, it'll be crystal clear. It looks milky now. It may look a little bit milky when you put it on your piece. Don't worry. It's going to be, you know, it's going to look great. So Carol, you don't paint furniture. Okay. Well, hopefully you like what we're doing here. So what I do is that what's important about polycrylic, whatever you do, mm, whatever you do, do not shake your can. Bubbles. You do not want to create bubbles in your polycrylic ever, 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 because I just talked to you again about what bubbles and what bubbles does to your final piece. When a bubble dries, when you apply it on the piece, it creates this pin like black dot on your piece. You know, you invest so much time, energy, resources, emotions into your piece. And when you're doing the final sealant stage, oh, when you have that happen, that's just, that's just sad. So when you stir it, stir it very, very slowly. Very, not very dramatic, I know. Not very dramatic. Hey, Dawn. You've been having bubble problems. Okay, so Dawn, did you see... Earlier when I was talking about, um, tell me, did you see what I was talking about the Minwax brush that they try to upsell you with, with the Minwax? Tell me. So you wanna move it very slowly. It's pretty easy. You know, sometimes I hear people say there's like a sludge or a thickness on the bottom of the can and you really gotta do a good job mixing it. I've never had that experience with the Minwax polyacrylic. So you just stir it really slowly. It has very minimal odor to it. It's a water-based sealant. That's something I promised my husband is that, well, that's why I don't refinish furniture. I promised my husband I wouldn't be dealing with heavy, smelly chemicals that could basically be detrimental to my life in the future. I want to be with him for a long time, so I only use water-based products. It's true. There are oil-based products that are out there that are fantastic, but, you know, this is just a result of me promising my husband because I love him. <laughs> All right, I think we're done with that. Now I have two different color tables that I'm going to be sealing today. You see this acid green behind me? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Okay, so Dawn, you saw what I was talking about, the, uh, the polyacrylic brush from Minwax. Good. Don't buy it. Only use foam brushes. So I'm going to be doing two different color tables. This acid green, which is sublime. Oh, you shaked it? And you shake. Don't shake. Don't shake it, Dawn. Don't do that, honey. Um, <laughs> thanks for the thumbs up, Carol. Because I'm working with two different colors, there could be residual color. When I'm sealing a table, I don't want to use the same brush, let alone use the same amount of polyacrylic when I jump from table to table because there will be residual color from my table that could accidentally, you know, be clung onto my polyacrylic or on my brush. And then when I start sealing the other color, you know, I could get some of my marigold on my sublime and I don't want that to happen. I don't. It'd actually be kind of cool if you think about it, but I don't want to do that. All right. So I'm going to segregate. I'm going to, I got two different jars. I'm going to put a little bit of my polyacrylic in here for my marigold project, and then I'm going to use this little jar for my sublime. Do not, here's a little tip, do not dip your brush and then apply and then dip again. Don't do it. I have a lazy voice and it constantly tells me to do that. Don't do it. <laughs> Who else deals with voices like this? Um, because the, any residual color you get from, let's say my marigold, and I dip it back into my Minwax polyacrylic, I could contaminate my whole can here of polyacrylic. And it's marigold. <laughs> so don't do it. Just pour a little bit that you know that you're going to use, then set your can aside. Does that make sense? The same rule goes with wax, okay? Don't dip your brush when waxing directly into your can of wax. Apply and then re-dip, don't do it. Wax is expensive, can I get a thumbs up? It is, some brands are very expensive and you wanna protect your investment. All right, I'm just gonna pour a little bit into my jar here. Oh, I'm not gonna do it over myself. I know myself too well. Okay. That'll be good gonna put my little cap on. Oh, hey neighbors. Okay. I am gonna put a glove on 
You don't need to. It's not a safety thing. I get my nails done and I'm tired of trashing my nails after I spend a fortune on them. I mean, I'm so, I'm ridiculous that way. All right, let me get my stuff out of the way. We're just gonna start sealing. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Let me know how you are. So again, I'm in Folsom, California. We just moved here from Madison, Wisconsin. Here we go. Ooh, I'm excited. This is my favorite part. So, you know, again, I'm gonna get my brush with the Minwax on. Don't shake it, don't be aggressive, just don't create any bubbles, whatever you do. And when you apply your polycrylic, you're gonna do long lines along the grain of the wood. I'm sorry if my head starts blocking you. Let me know if I start blocking you guys. And you don't have to do it generously. I like to do about, gosh, three, maybe four coats, and it's a really fast process. You don't wanna play with it too much because it will dry pretty quickly. Don't be stressed out. It's not like gonna instantaneously dry and then you're like, oh my God, it's gonna dry, I'm gonna ruin it. I gotta do it like so fast. You don't, you know, you can actually take your time. Oh yeah, stop. I know that you are in Pennsylvania. This is when, this is my favorite part because this is when the color begins to brighten and it starts to pop. Also the original finish, I on purpose allowed some of the original finish to show through. And I love the process of sealing because that's when the nuances, oh, I love it, begin to deepen and really pop. So you may be wondering, okay, I know I'm not supposed to have bubbles, Kristen, but how do I know when bubbles are there? And it's pretty easy. It's kind of like, you know how when waves roll onto the shore from the ocean and it creates this like foam-like film, you know, when, when the, um, the waves recede? Give me a thumbs up, you know what I mean. Those bubbles, kind of like that film, that's what it's gonna look like. It'll look like a pool of like white foam. Land it on my piece. Oh, there's nothing sadder than finding fuzz or hair inside your ceiling, frozen in time like this. Ah, I don't want that. So look out for hairs, look out for bristles from your brush, all that good stuff. Let me know if you guys have any questions. So really, I'm just gonna get into the groove here and just start sealing, okay? So was it you, Dawn, that you were thinking of polycrylic? Or you have done polycrylic, right? Because you said you had bubbles. What are you working on right now? I'm just making sure it's evenly applied. I'm looking out for the, those foam bubbles and they are here, they happen. But with the foam brush, it, it gets taken out really easily. I found that using the Minwax Blue Brush, the bubbles just kept sticking around. It really, it was not good. So now I'm already seeing the Minwax is already starting to, to dry a bit here. I'll probably apply Oops, a coat every few hours. But you know what, the more time you give it, the better. The more time you give it, the better. Hold on. Can you see that okay? Tell me if you give me a thumbs up if you can see that. All right, there we go. So here I have some pretty deep grooves in the um, detail of this piece. 
And I want to make sure I don't uh, fill it up with the Minwax. Just got to watch the saturation on my foam brush. So I'm just going to try to move it around. So I've come to the conclusion that I need to invest in multiple clips that I use for my foam because it's really hard for me to get you guys into a good view, right, without having to move you guys around a lot. So Carol, how to do, do perfectly with you? Okay. Fantastic, Carol. I'm glad. That's why I do these lives. It's true. I'm so glad. Here's the thing. Carol, listen to me. Listen to me. There are a lot of brands out there, a lot of boutiques, great boutiques, small businesses that um, sell chalky finish paint, as well as the tools that they suggest that you should use. Okay? A lot of them are going to try to convince you that you need to spend a lot of money to do it. And I am here to tell you, no, you don't. You most likely have the tools already on hand at your house. I have never used a chalky finish paint or a chalk paint brush ever, ever. I like to use sponges. I like to use rollers. I use regular paint brushes. So if you like the color that I'm using, it's called Marigold from my paint line. There is a link on this live in the subject title there. And uh, it'll direct you to the Marigold. I'm just trying to fish out a river of polycrylic in my details here. So I'm looking out for my bubbles. I got a good angle with the light here, the natural light outside, and I can really see them. Funny story, funny story. So I was in here setting up for the live. I'm trying to, where can I go here? Hold on. There we go. I was trying to set up for this live and this man walks by. And he, you know, I'm setting up, I'm working hard, getting to my hot mess mode. And he yells out, rose hips. I said, excuse me, you know, and he saw the look on my face and he froze. I'm like, I was ready to just like <laughs> take him down. What did you say about my hips? <laughs> and he said, uh, rose hips. You, you've got rose hips. <laughs> and he was pointing at my rose bush. And, um, he gave me a nice little one-on-one about roses. Do you guys, do you, do you know what rose hips are? Tell me. I just learned it today. You should have seen that face. His face was priceless. He's like, oh no, I offended. <laughs> and he recovered quite quickly. He did. All right. I'm trying to see. Can you see this leg? I'm going to work on this leg next. Can you see that? Okay. So rose hips, they are the residual of the rose flower once it drops, you know, falls off, dries off. And a big bulbous head basically appears after the rose flower falls. I had no idea what rose hips were. No idea. Well, what it is, it's that it's seeds. It's the plant simply producing rose seeds. And I guess you can use it for like skincare, for tea. I mean, I'm definitely not, I'm going to clip these rose hips. There are so many of them. They deplete energy from the plant, so I got to get them off so I have more flowers coming. But I'm thinking I can make a tea. There's even skincare you can make. You can make oils. I was like, wow, jackpot. I'm excited. All right. Yeah, 
I definitely need more phone clips. Definitely. So you guys can see what I'm doing. Here's what I'm thinking. All right. I'm going to get some boxes. Oops, sorry. Put my hand in your face. I'm so sorry. I, uh, I'm going to stack some boxes so that you guys can watch it like, you know, full front on the table. This is not easy. I know I really got to work on my production value of my lives, but you know, you can only do what you can do. Hold on. This is my, my shipping supply um, area. I'm going to get me some boxes. Did I show you guys what keeps coming? I am up to my armpits in packing peanuts. peanuts. You wouldn't believe it. Hold on. So like this showed up <laughs> like a week ago. Supposedly this is 20 square feet of peanuts. I didn't know. I couldn't like decipher. And then this shows up. I'm like, my God, it keeps coming. So I guess I accidentally put two orders in of peanuts. Well, there are no returns. It's like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I have no idea. Buy some paint, please. Cause I got, boy, am I gonna pack those things up nice for you? I'm telling you. All right. Let's, I should have had this figured out earlier, guys. I'm so, I'm so sorry. So sorry. Hold on. There we go. Tell me if. So sorry. Bear with me. Take some Dramamine, folks. Take some Dramamine. There we go. Let's see if this will work. Can you see the tape? Oh, hey, I think we're on to something. I think we're on to something. It would be easier if I just moved the phone, but live and learn. Okay. So I'm so excited. Since moving to Folsom, I just received my first quote request <clears throat> on a project for a client, a potential client. I'm so excited. She wants to um, drop her stuff off in my garage so I can work on it. She has a dining set, as well as an old like Dutch uh, cabinet. Just so cute, so stinking cute. And I'm hoping that we get to work together. She's, uh, right now she's in Sacramento, Sacramento and she's planning on moving to El Dorado Hills. So here, you know, I'm going to create bubbles so you can see what I'm talking about. You see this like milky fil film right there. See that? That's the bubbling I'm talking about. It's like a sea foam, right? That you see that comes up on the shore after a wave hits from the ocean. And you don't want that. When you apply it, you make sure you just kind of comb out the bubbles. Make sure it's evenly applied and it's like this nice, clear, even shimmer about it. All right. I'm playing with it a little bit too much, so I'm just going to cut it out. It's my tendency. It's my natural tendency. Do you guys ever fiddle? When, <laughs> just fiddle too much? Just keep playing with something? I do. It's a human nature thing. Wow, so my top is already almost dry. So I can actually probably put a second coat on sooner than I had originally planned. You know, in Wisconsin, where I came from just last month, this probably would have taken longer to dry just because of the humidity. But right now, wow, it's moving fast. Just gonna work 
on this leg right now. Make sure you can see it. So I see you guys popping up. Let me know if you have any questions. Please say hey. I'd love to say hey back. Carol and I were, were hanging. Me and Dawn. Dawn in Pennsylvania. And we're just working on sealing these two end tables that I've been working on this week with you guys. I've been doing everything via live this week with these tables. So the color that I used on this table is called Marigold from Porchnook. It's my own line of chalky finish paint. And we're using a polycrylic to seal it. Regardless of the brand of furniture paint you use, guys, you always, 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 there's one thing you're gonna leave with this live. Always seal your piece. There is gonna be temptation to not do it. There will be. Just recognize it, own it, own your behavior, and then seal it, okay? You just gotta seal your piece because Again, regardless of the brand, it's very prone to scratching if you don't seal it. And it'd be horrible if your beautifully worked, you know, piece of work gets ruined just because one person may have walked past it and accidentally, you know, bumped against it and scratched it. That would make you sad. I think I need a smaller. So this is when the multiple sizes come in handy. So again, I provided the link to this live. Hey, Teresa. How are you? It's so good to see your face pop up. So I like to, again, have a couple of sizes of foam uh, brushes on hand because I'm finding that these legs, they're, the detail, the crevices in here, definitely need a smaller head to work with. Um, so yeah, have a couple of sizes in hand. And you know what? Again, this is a water-based uh, sealant. You can just wash out your brushes afterwards and you can always reuse them. But you also got to recognize that every sponge, whether it be a handheld sponge or, you know, one of these, always has, um, the integrity can actually diminish. They could start to disintegrate on you just because of the use in the brush, um, the rubbing. So always keep in mind that you got to keep a close look at your sponge to make sure it's not like falling apart. Okay, I'm going to try to just move you guys rather than just moving the table. One second. Can you see that okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can see that. So Teresa, do you um, do you prefer wax or polycrylic? What do you use? Oh, I'm glad you're doing great, fantastic. I'm a wax girl, I love wax, but for my higher volume pieces, you know, ones that we're gonna see a lot of traffic in the home, I like to use a polycrylic for a little more durability. This is the Matte by Minwax. So if, if it does get a little bit heavy in some areas, like in the crevices here, it may dry a little bit cloudy just because there's so much built up. So that's why I try to avoid it as much as possible. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not. You probably won't even notice it. But it's just a little tip for you. So actually when this thing is um, dry on the top, I'll probably flip it on its head and work on the inside of these legs. Cause I wanna make sure I get, you know, all angles of the legs done. Yeah, so, you know, to be honest, Teresa, um, wax is a lot of hard work. Like if you, if you want a good sweat on, <laughs> use your wax, but polyacrylic is much easier on the uh, muscles. Yep. Bubble using poly. We talked about that earlier, Teresa. Foam brushes are the way to go. Totally, re just really, it's a, it's a world of difference when it comes to the amount of bubbling. And you can comb them out so easily. 
Again, Minwax, I love you, but don't get the Minwax brushes that they try to upsell you on with the um, polycrylic. Don't do it. So many bubbles, and it's really hard to comb them out with this brush. Also have um, different hand or different sizes on hand because like these legs right here definitely need a smaller head than this big head. I have a tendency to just try to work with whatever tool I have on hand and just force it to happen. Don't do it. Just like get yourself several sizes and you'll be ready to go. There's a link to um, a great bulk item on Amazon where you can get a bunch of these in different sizes. The um, the link is on the subject title of this live. So are you going to do matte, Teresa? Are you going to go satin? Are you going to do high gloss? What do you like to use on your sealants? This is a matte. Did I already do this side? No, I still got to do this side and then I think I'm going to move on to my sublime table. Yay! So I was also talking about, Teresa, the importance of making sure that you use, like segregate your polycrylic that you're going to use for each piece in a different jar if your pieces are different colors because the color, the residual of the color could um, get carried over to your next piece. So I have my sublime table behind me and I would hate it if some res residual marigold got on there. It may actually end up being really cool, but <laughs> I have a plan in mind. I just don't want that to happen. Another tip with the polycrylic, similar to wax, Teresa, you know this, like with wax, you never dip your brush directly into the can because you'll contaminate it possibly with the color of the piece that you're, um, you know, sealing. So, uh, try to use different brushes or at least clean your brushes before you move on to another color. So I have some clotting here. I'm just trying to diminish that white cloudy bubbly clotting because it's just a little bit too much just smoothing it out all right what do you guys think i'm doing sort of an express effort here when it comes to sealing this table uh, only because i'm on live with you guys and i don't want to waste your time uh so yeah let's move on to sublime give me a thumbs up if you like that idea <clears throat> I'm gonna move you just move you guys over. Can you see that okay? Do you guys want to start? Let's start you up on the top. You know what? I just want to look at you for a second. <laughs> I need a glass of water. You use gloss on others. Awesome. Oh, drop leaf tables are the best. Is it like a side drop leaf table? Or is it, um, Teresa, is it like a dining table? <sighs> warm, it's warm. It's been like in the hundreds this week. Now we're like 90. <laughs> All right. Last time I did a drop leaf table, I used my Sugar Snap Pea, love it. It's like this summery grass green about it. And when you shab it up, I just love it. All right, I'm gonna put you on the clip. <laughs> Wish me luck. So you can see the top of my sublime table. There we go. Let's get you down. Put you down, but in a good way. What do you think? Okay. All right, I'm gonna practice what I preach. And that is 
first of all. I'm get some lids here. One second. Hold, please. I'm going to practice what I preach here. I'm working on a different color. Therefore, I am putting the, the polycrylic that I used on my marigold, and I'm putting it away because I'm not going to use it. All right? Because I don't want to, this is kind of contaminated, right? You want to separate what you're going to use. Don't use it on multiple items or pieces if you're doing different colors. So I'm going to set this aside. <clears throat> and I'm just going to stir up my polycrylic again. Before I give myself a fresh jar to work on my sublime piece. If you're going to be tempted to just dip your brush into the can and just start going, don't do it. That's my recommendation. Stir it very slowly, very smoothly. Do not want to create bubbles. Bubbles are not your friend when it comes to sealing with a polycrylic. Not your friend. Not your friend. Just going to get a towel. Fresh jar. All right, fresh brushes, and then we'll go. Give me a thumbs up if you can see this okay. Both sides are, I'm just reading your comment here. It was your brother's leaf table. Oh, who passed away. Teresa, I'm so sorry. It's in rough shape. Well, I bet you're gonna make it just beautiful. Sorry about your brother who passed. You know, I just wanna give a shout out to Aaron Goines, um, who just recently had a loss in her family. Aaron Goines, a lovely, lovely young woman in Wisconsin. She's a part of my artist circle for Porch Nook. She uses my paint and helps me with my color portfolio. Her mother-in-law just passed away from lung cancer. Um, her husband, such a sweet man. I feel my heart, it goes out to them. It really does. I'm so sorry, Teresa, and just to see that you lost your brother, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I love the foam brush, really. You, You'll feel so happy if you use a foam brush. Do not use like a bristle brush. Again, my apologies, Minwax. Sorry, but not sorry. Do not use the Minwax polycrylic brush. Just because it's the same color as the can doesn't mean it's a good idea. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm loving this. So this is Sublime. I'll be honest with you guys. This is uh, one of Porch Note's least popular color. Only because... It's um, really much, really out of the box type of color when it comes to painting furniture. Porch Nook, it's all about taking risks. I like to experiment with, I'm all about vibrancy and color. There are a lot of brands out there that really focus on the natural sort of subdued color, very, and that's just not me. I want punch of color, I want saturation, I want statements. So that's why I'm testing out Sublime in 2018. We'll see if it makes the cut for 2019. We'll see. There we go. Oh, this is looking so fine. I'm loving it. Loving it, loving it. Okay, I'm going to put you guys back down to ground level. Oh, I love how the distressing is popping. Love it. You know when your intuition, when you're working on a project, you got like these OMGs going on inside your head, like, OMG, I love what's, and you love what's going on, you get so excited. That's when you know you're on the right track. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the ground level here. Here we go. Oh, oh I almost dropped you. <laughs> 
see that? Reflexes like a cat. I still got it. <laughs> All right, hold on. Woo. Heart attack, Teresa. Your brother. Were you guys close? What was your brother's name? I'm curious. I hope you don't mind me asking. You know, there's a really big glare here. I'm gonna move the angle here. Hold on, bear with me. You won't see what I'm doing if I get a big glare. You like my production value? I got, I got you guys up on post office boxes here. Oh, this is gonna be a good angle, I think. Sorry, sorry, forgive me. Sorry guys. All right. Oh, there's even more Claire. This stinks. Sunshine. You're bothering me. Here we go. How about this? How about them apples? You guys like that? That way you get to see the color, but there's no glare. I can see you guys too. You were close. His name was Robert. Hmm. But we called him Gary. Okay. Why not Robert? I'm guessing. Okay, I'm going to guess, Teresa. I'm going to guess, Teresa, that you called him Gary because perhaps there was a relative. Maybe your dad's name was Robert. Tell me if I'm wrong. I like the smell of the Minwax. <laughs> Confession time. I like the smell of the Minwax because first of all, it's not too strong. But it's got kind of like that black marker smell that we used to sniff. We used to sniff in elementary school. Now they call it huffing. But <laughs> you know what I mean. It smelled so good. Gotta have more black marker. That is it. I guessed right. Yep. I guessed it. Did your father go by um, Robert or Bob? I'm guessing Robert. All right. I'm just loving, oh, you know, this is a little bit, hmm. I'm loving the distressing along the bottom here. Let me get this held for you while I do this. I hope you can see this. So this is caning, you guys, this interwoven feature here on the bottom of the table. Caning is a very popular uh, signature feature of a Drexel piece. Drexel is a vintage brand made in the USA. I always say, if you're gonna put a Drexel in front of me, I'm gonna buy it because they're such great pieces of furniture. But not only that, there's something about the Drexel brand and those who owned Drexel, they te or teach, they treat their furniture, I swear, like royalty. Like every Drexel piece I ever got my hands on, like it was treated like royalty. It was always in pristine condition, always. You know, here I need a smaller, here I need a smaller brush. I'm gonna put you down for a second. Put you down, I need a smaller brush. Hold on. <clears throat> here we go. William Robert is your dad's name. He went by Bobby. Thanks for sharing this. <laughs> so personal, aren't we, Teresa? <laughs> All right, so because, you know, because of the flat, big flat side or the top side, it's always nice to work with a larger brush. This is why it's nice to work with multiple size brushes because you just know that you're more effective in these tighter, smaller features of a piece. If you start using a brush that's too big, too wide, and it's just not allowing you to be effective, um, that means that it's just your, it's the clear sign that you need to move to a smaller brush every time. I kid you not, gotta do it. You'll be tempted. 
to just try to work with the brush that you got going on at the time, don't do it. Fight that urge. Fight that shortcut. So again, I provided a link to Amazon that gives you a bag, or I will show you a bag of multi-size sponge, sponge brushes. Um, yeah, click on it. Check it out. All right, I'm going to just rotate this guy. Let's see. Oh. So I got good lighting right now with you guys, so I don't want to ruin that. There we go. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Feel free to just give me a shout out in comments. I would love to hear from you. So again, we're just working with a polycrylic. We're sealing these pieces that we did together earlier this week. This table, I used uh, Porchnook Paints Sublime. It's probably my edgiest color in my 2018 collection. I love it. Am I biased? Yes, but I only do things that I love. I love how it distresses, how it pops when you distress. And then when you apply a sealant, whether it's a polycrylic or a wax, just, oh, it gets so rich and awesome. So today, again, I'm using a foam brush. I feel these foam brushes are the best way to avoid bubbling in your polycrylic. Polycrylic does tend to bubble but you can work it out and comb it out. Bubbles, if you allow them to stay on there and dry, they create like these little pinpoints in your final piece. And that's not desirable. Will, you, will anyone really notice? Eh, you know, maybe not. But if you have an opportunity to do it well, you know. Oh gosh, I'm sorry guys. Hey, Mr. Bensie, I just, you know what? I need an assistant. I need someone else to hold the camera for me. Just reading your note here, Teresa. Your mom's favorite actors. Oh my goodness. Ronald Douglas. <laughs> There's more to your comment, but I can't see it. I'll be able to read it later, Teresa. I can't see it all. Facebook says, too much. Teresa's got too much to say, but I love hearing it. I do. So you guys, if comments are in your way and you can't see what I'm doing, all you have to do is swipe the comments to the side and you'll get a full screen. A little tip for you. Now I am a little nervous about applying the, um, the polycrylic onto the caning feature here, the uh, interwoven feature here of the table, only because I want to make sure there's not a clotting that happens. When I say clotting, you know, just basically buildup of the sealant between the interwoven details. I'm just kind of avoiding it right now because emotionally I'm not ready. <laughs> but I've done caning before. I don't know what my big deal is. Oh yeah, it's no big deal. Okay, we're going to do this. I am going to... Let's see. You know, I bet you I can tilt the table so you guys can see what I'm doing. Can you see the caning now? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. There we go. I'm just wiping off some. Oh, yeah. It's totally fine. I don't know what I was worried about. You know, the big fat scary is so funny. The unknown can be so scary, but then when you do it, it's like, oh, what was I worried about? Human nature is so funny that way. So it's already dry on the top here, so I'm able to actually handle the piece really easily now. It's amazing how quick it dries. It, you know, it dries just the perfect amount of time. It dries quickly enough where you can just keep applying coats pretty quickly. But at the same time, you don't feel like you're in a rush to get things done and done right. You're like, it's not stressful at all. You can work with it and it'll look just fine. Oh, this caning is awesome. I love it. Love's a strong word, but I do. Hey, Annabelle. Annabelle Fleck. Where are you watching from, Annabelle? I love it that you said, hey, thank you. Okay, I'm going to do this top part right here. I'm going to angle you upwards a little bit. So the lighting is just so-so. It's like either I got a glare, or you guys are seeing things kind of in the shade. 
Oh my gosh, I love how the detail. Oh, I love this. I love shabby chic in you guys. I do. It's about finding the perfection in those imperfections. It's like therapy, I swear. Some people feel compelled that things need to look perfect and, fan, you know, polished. This just like gives you permission just to be yourself, in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna get a little deep here. <laughs> but I love Shabby Chic because you know, it's just you and your intuition, your creative intuition, and you just listen to it and you just go, and it is so much fun. Do I sound nuts? Does anyone out there know what I'm talking about? Am I alone in this? That's truly how I feel. So after this, yeah, I gotta do the side right here. After this, I'm gonna go to prune me some rose hips. I learned something today, rose hips, it's a thing. So this house that we just bought here in Folsom, we just moved in a few weeks ago. And uh, there we go, you see that? It's got five rose bushes on the front, gorgeous, but I know nothing about whole, um, taking care of roses. I don't, but I love it that my husband got me a house with rose bushes. He'll never have to buy me flowers again. Never. I'm in love with it. So rose bushes are these bulbs that actually develop after the flower falls, dries and falls. And it's actually the seeds being developed on the rose bush. And it actually depletes energy from the plant. So if you want healthier, bigger rose flowers, you should really be clipping the rose hips. Would you guys be interested in me walking you out to the roses and show you what I'm talking about? Let me know. Don't give me thumbs up or hearts, please, because I may not see them. Like, maybe put like, show me some hips in comments. <laughs> show me those hips if you're interested. So I guess there's many things you can do with rose hips. I did a little Google on rose hips and it's amazing. People make tea out of them. Um, I guess it has more vitamin C than an orange. I didn't know this. Um, you can make essential oils out of it. It's just, I'm so excited that, you know, I got something growing that I didn't even know had like high value. It's really, it's really valuable. I'm excited to work with it. But if you guys, if anyone's ever worked with rose hips before, I'd love to hear from you. Um, any tips you can share? I'd love to hear it. All right. One more final rotation here. Oh. Just saw some bubbles back here, hold on. See, I should probably be using my smaller brush here. I should be, there we go. So again, excuse me, when I'm done doing my legs and everything and when the, the top is truly dry and strong enough, I'm gonna flip these on their head so I can get a better uh, eye on how I need to seal the inside of these legs. Sealing the inside of the legs is kind of hard when you're looking at the table in this position. I like to flip things over. Okay. Did that. I need to do this. Okay. Miss Teresa, Mississippi. Oh. I would not compare Mississippi humidity with Wisconsin humidity, but I want to say I know what you're talking about. I haven't had to deal with um, California humidity. So if anyone out there is in the Folsom area, I need to know. I've got this dehumidifier that I brought with me from Wisconsin because you know you need it because it's so darn humid during the summers but am I gonna need it in Folsom California I don't know and it's taking up garage space and I need to know if I can just get rid of it I would love to just get rid of it but I need to know if I actually need it I don't know we've worked very hard to fit into this house um, as most of you probably know that Wisconsin versus California, you get half the space for twice the price. And I did have to get rid of about 50% of our belongings in order to know that we're gonna fit into this house. I promised myself that we weren't gonna be one of those families that had to basically pay rent for a storage um, facility. Or I didn't wanna be one of those houses where your garage is totally packed with stuff and there are no cars in it. I didn't want to be that family. So, so far, I think we're going to fit in this house okay. We're able to get one car into the garage right now. But here's the, the stinker. These packing peanuts that keep showing up, 
It's eating up all of our garage space. I'm just beside myself, you know? I was all worried about trying to get rid of my stuff. I should have been worried about packing materials. Okay, just gonna turn this around. This is kind of dark. I'm so sorry. Hold on. There you go. That's a little better. What do you think? So here I'm gonna use my wider brush on the face of this. So Teresa, we've only had to deal with a lot of heat. I've already dealt with 100 degree days, but I'll tell you, um, the humidity, humidity has not been an issue, which I'm quite thankful for. I'm just gonna finish, let's see. Yeah, I just gotta finish this leg. And then I'm gonna get off my knees here and actually stand up like a human being. And I'm just gonna stretch <laughs> for a second. And then I wanna show you these rose hips I've been talking about. Okay, I think we're good. So again, I'm doing sort of an express version of sealing here. Let me get a cap on this jar of sealant. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to put this jar right next to my sublime so I know it belongs there. There we go. I lost you for a second. Place that. Hey, Annabelle. Put that by my marigold. Oh, my bad. I want like a big studio table where I can just stay upright and not sit down on the floor like an animal. All right, so that's what we're doing. That's what I just did. I just put on my first coat of polycrylic sealant onto these two end tables here. Earlier this week, we painted them together, then we distressed them together. Yesterday I was supposed to go on live, but there was a jackhammer going on across the street, so I couldn't go live. So we just sealed these with a polycrylic, more specifically with Minwax. And then, um, yeah, we're gonna let this dry. I'll probably be able to put on another coat here in about, gosh, 30 minutes, I'm so excited. Get these things done. I'll send you guys some uh, pictures here. So Teresa, you think you're gonna poly your table? It is easy. Spun, yes. I was all wax, <laughs> can I tell you? There was a day I was 100% wax. I was all about wax, I was a purist. And then my arms started hurting. I'm thinking, am I going to need physical therapy because of my waxing? <laughs> it was beating me down. It's a lot of hard work. It is. Um, it's physically much easier, uh, much physically much easier doing the polyacrylic. And you can apply coats, multiple coats within one day. Um, and again, I like to use polyacrylic when I have a high traffic item, meaning that I know this table is going to be in a living room or there's going to be a lot of bodies moving around it. So I want to make sure it's a little bit more durable. Wax, love it. Can't beat the buttery sheen of it, but it's kind of like bringing in a relative, a new relative, like a baby into the house because it needs to be taken care of when years pass. It does. You have to reapply the wax sealant once every couple of years, you know, if not more so. Um, so I, that's why I like the polycrylic. It's kind of a no nonsense kind of solution. I'm a no nonsense kind of gal. It's true. All right, do you guys want to walk with me to the rose bushes so I can show you these rose hips? What do you think? I'm gonna do it. I asked you, that was passive aggressive of me. That's very Wisconsin of me, where, you know, basically where passive aggression was created. <laughs> I asked you and then I'm gonna do it. Let's go, let's take a walk. I need to stretch my back from hunching over. All right, rose hips. Here are my rose bushes. I am going to flip you guys so I can see what you're seeing. Hold, please. Here we go. Rose bushes. This is the front of my house. Our new house in Folsom. Love it. So cute. When it's tidy enough, I'll show you the inside. I'm, you know, still, it's still messy. That's okay. But I want things a little bit more done. So here are the roses. Look how tall those are. Here are the rose hips. Let me show you. Hold on. Let me find a good one here. Okay. Here we go. Rose hips this so after the flower falls let me find a better example 
after the flower dries, oh, here we go. So after the flower dries and falls off, you'll see this bulb. Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. That's actually, oh, sorry, here we go. Is that better? That's actually seeds being developed and the in the rose bush. This depletes the energy from the rose and it's actually uh, suggested that you prune them off immediately. The thing is, is that you can do a lot of stuff with these bulbs. I guess when they get bigger and redder, you can harvest them and use them for skin care, for tea. They got, I guess, more vitamin C than an orange when you consume um, rose hips, like crushed rose hips. I'm trying to find a really big, oh, look at these big ones. Oh, this is a big one. I'm trying to figure out if I'm supposed to harvest them when they are um, red. Right now they're really green. Here's one turning kind of red. Give me a thumbs up if you can see what I'm talking about. Now originally, my naive <laughs> mind, I thought, oh, these big bulbs mean that more flowers are coming, but that's not actually the case. It's seeds. So I think that'll be my project today, after I get a couple of coats of my sealant done. I'm just trying to find some right out here. I'm trying to find the button where I can swap the camera here. I'm sorry, I need to get into some shade real quick. Bear with me. Here we go, hi. Oh, Teresa, you want to know what color the chest of drawers is? So because of the jackhammer and I wasn't able to go live yesterday, I decided to work on a dresser. Here she is. Yes, it's a she. I used my uh, porch nook chalky finish paint after midnight on this dresser. Let me turn on the camera for you. And because I love anything, anything shiny, hold on, I'm sorry about the focus. Hold on, let's try this again. Backing up, here she is. I love anything shiny, more specifically, I love anything copper. So I took the original pulls and spray painted them with Rust-Oleum hammered copper. I'll show you the bottle here in a second. What do you think? This piece, I think I'm actually going to regret selling because I love it so much. I do. I love After Midnight, first of all. Secondly, copper, anything copper, I love. Um, let me show you the can. I love the Rust-Oleum metallic line of paint. Such great stuff. Right, I'm gonna turn you around so you can actually see it, read it correctly, hold on. You know, I did a post earlier today, Teresa, that provides a link to the Rust-Oleum. Here it is. That's what I used on the poles. What do you think? I just love how the copper just pops because of the after midnight black inky blue. Love it. <laughs> well, thanks, Teresa. Yeah, it's called uh, After Midnight, and you can find it at porchnook.com. So fun. You know what? Uh, so the copper, I couldn't, I would have actually gone rose gold for these only because I'm so, I want a rose gold kick right now. I would have done rose gold, but I figured, you know, I'm splitting hairs. I had copper on hand, so that's what I did. Oh, you want to know what else I'm doing? Oh, let me tell you. My husband bought me something. He loves me. He, he gets me. I want to show you something. Real quick. Since we're hanging, he got me this. You know, I'm going to put this on a table. I'm going to flip you around so you can read it so it's not backwards. Look at this. Dry erase paint. It's a clear finish. So basically what it means is that you can write, apply this to any surface. It can be a wall, it can be a piece of furniture, anything. You apply it, it's clear, and you can apply um, dry eraser pens on it. And then, you know, you just wipe it off and it erases. So with this garage, this is my workbench area. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this on every cabinet door that I have available to me for my work area. And then, you know, I can do my to-do lists. I can write down what's actually in my cabinets because my memory is not what it used to be. I tend to just like start throwing things into a storage space and forget where they are. So it'd be nice if I could actually write down what's in every cabinet. What do you think of that idea? I love it. Love it. All right. I'm going to sign off. Thanks so much. Neat idea. Thank you. 
I was thinking too, Teresa, you could put that on furniture, like kids' furniture. Why not? Create a dry eraser area. I keep thinking though, for kids, it wouldn't be confusing. Like, oh, you can write on this wall, but don't write on this wall. <laughs> I would have to do my, you know, if I had little ones, I don't have little ones anymore. If I had little ones, I would have to apply it to every single wall in the house in case the kid just couldn't figure out which wall they could write on. Well, can you imagine the mess that would make? <laughs> the thing though about this is that you have to commit to the moment. I guess once it's a two can, com you have to combine two cans to make the dry eraser chemical. And you have to apply it 90 minutes after you mix it, meaning you can't keep it for later. Once you mix it up, you gotta use it. Little tip for you. Maybe I should do a live when I do that. I want to do a live while I apply this, that'd be great. I guess it takes like three days though to cure. <laughs> Thanks for the laughs. It takes about three days for it to cure and you can actually use it. So it can actually be kind of a boring live because I'll be just applying a, a clear chemical on some white cabinets, that ain't sexy. But you know, you never know. Maybe I can combine it with another project. Thanks for hanging with me guys. Thank you. I wish I could play music for us while we're hanging together, but you actually can't play music while you're on Facebook Live. Did you know this? They will shut you down. It's like a copyright licensing thing. You just can't play other people's music on live, which I get. I get that. I would play music though for you guys if I could. But if I can't turn on my music, I can at least hang out with you guys. All right, I'm gonna sign off. Happy Friday. Stay cool. <laughs> Stay cool, Teresa. You in Mississippi, good golly. Take care. Call me, you got my phone number on Facebook, message me, let me know if you have any questions about ceiling furniture. I'd be happy to answer them for you anytime, okay? Take care. I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.